You heard how John how John got here. We were up here a month ago. He shoots me a a picture of me up here that I put out on the internet to uh, the YouTube channel I've already got talking about the market, giving me crap about not bringing him along. So you're up. Then he says, "Hey, I'm bringing my buddy Ryan." I'm like, cool. He says, "You'll really like him. Successful guy." But how, he, I know how he pitched me. How did he pitch you? Uh, well, he didn't really tell me a whole lot about it. He's like, "Hey, we're gonna go up there and uh, ride some jeeps around and." camp out and I said oh well okay that sounds like fun he says you know we might talk a little bit about you know some um, like-minded people that you know push hard and you know have been successful through the years and they might want to hear you from you soap and yeah. tell you how to sell your soap and <laughs> yeah two more people some soap yeah, and you'll be as successful someday into so. trying new things have you heard of Amway <laughs> so you know coming into it I didn't really know you know we're going to be talking about but uh um, just getting up here and driving the Jeeps around and meeting everybody and talking last night, it was, you know, a pretty common theme of, you know, everybody having the same kind of message or, uh, interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's helpful when you have people have common interests, come up and do something like this. Was it, was it what you expected? So last night you came up, rolled up with us. Met the few people. What one? We just barely got here and got hammered with the rain. Oh, so you're kind of being forced into interacting with people. They get up this morning, have breakfast. How do you feel now versus when you got here? Um, it was a pretty interesting day. I mean, we went down some pretty good trails. I didn't think a jeep would go down for one. <laughs> um, we took some really, really good Me video. Neither. And uh, or, or, we had uh, rock touching a Jeep window that was, the rock was as big as the Jeep. That was interesting. <laughs> and, uh, but no, you know, we just kind of got thrown into the evening last night with the rain and then everybody kind of jumped in, setting up tents and setting up camp. And then the rain finally subsided after an hour and, you know, we had dinner and then we had, you know, talked for a little bit, kind of got to know each other and had breakfast. And, you know, I didn't really know what to expect from it, the trip to be honest with you, so. Well, hopefully it's better than what you could have imagined it might have been. We're trying to give everybody a, one, a different experience. You've never done the rock crawling thing before, right? Not in Jeeps, no. Not in Jeeps, no. In what? Can-Am. Can -Am. Can -Am. So, we get Can-Ams, we ride those around a little what, bit. What kind of rock? Uh, the little ones that keep the road smooth? Yeah, yeah, the, the <laughs> ones that were half as big as the ones we went over today. <laughs> right so. on. But no, it was it was really cool just hanging out and, and uh, hearing everybody's story and you know just kind of taking the whole day and you know other than a little bit of rain the day was great and then we came back and uh, it was a really good trip. It's and then I hope to do it again and again and again and do some of these other trips that you guys are talking about doing oh, yeah. some of the shooting trips and meeting some of the other people that um, are kind of connected with everybody. It'd be cool to get a good good sized crowd coming and hanging out, but. You know, but I mean, there's something that got you to a point to be able to do these kind of things and all the can and all the stuff you talked about. So tell us about where you got started. What what got you to where you are now? Uh, so start from the beginning. Okay, it's going to be a really long story. <laughs> it was now. a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I kind of ra I was raised kind of just the average kid, uh, but I was very motivated, very competitive. And um, I started doing construction about 15 during the summers with my family in Omaha. And then after high school, I was like, you know, what am I going to do? Didn't know what to do. So I started doing construction full time. And I didn't really know, I didn't really have a path, like what, what I was going to do, where I was going, you know, should I go to college? I put myself through about a year as of college. And um, so I realized that I'm working construction now because I'm getting into my 20s. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to do this, I might as well go to the next level. And then I was like, well, if I do that, I better go to the next level. And then in my, you know, 
mid twenties or late twenties, I just decided to do my own business. And I didn't have a lot of support from anybody because they were like, you know, these things don't usually happen. You work for a good company, you know, you could fail. And to me, failure just wasn't an option. You know, I, I really wanted to do it. I wanted to start my own business from a very young age. And so I did it and got married right after it, had two kids, and then we started becoming pretty successful at the business. And about 31, we decided we're gonna build our first house and kind of live the American dream. We got our own business, we got our big house, we so got two kids. You build, build your first house. Yeah, and I went, it was the house. Yeah, I went from a, a about a really modest house. It was about built in the 70s to a brand new house. And we were doing pretty good, but I was, I was pretty hungry, so I was, you know, but we were really frugal. So it made sense to provide the family with a nice house. And then I just drove a work truck. So that was good enough for me. And then as we got going, we lived in this new house and we lived pretty frugal and, uh, you know, the market crashed and then all construction stopped. And it was just year after year of doing everything you could possibly do to try to stay afloat. And I remember the same people telling me that I might not make it the first time when I started the business to maybe you should just give up, go get a job, let the house go. And again, it was like failure just wasn't an option. You know, I was mm -hmm. young, I was, you know, had energy and I just kept pushing and kept pushing. And I remember my, my cousin, who's like a brother to me, just said, Hey, listen, you're so close. If you make it through, you'll be stronger than ever. And we just kept pushing and kept pushing. And we took every job and I was working maybe 80 or 90 hours a week. And somehow we finally made it through, but we were down to our last, like $2,000. All savings were gone. Everything was gone. And I remember calling my father-in-law just to say, Hey, listen, we're done. I can't do it because we were really tight and he didn't answer his phone. I remember later on that day, I called him again to say, Hey, we're just, we're done. I can't, I can't do it any longer. Can't hang on. Business is done. House is gone. And he didn't answer. And I just said later on that night, I just told my wife, unless I said, we're going to make it, we are absolutely going to make it. And so together we just kept doing everything we could do. And about another half a year later, it, it finally turned at the very last minute when we were just completely running on vapors and we just kept going and going and we were working out of our house too. The house, our dream house that we built for the family, we were working out of that, had all the trucks parked in the garages, but we just kept going and kept plugging forward. And it was like step after step forward, step forward, keep, just keep moving forward and things started to change in the market because market plays a big thing in this. You know, I mean, you could oh, be yeah. smart, you can work hard, but you kind of need things need to customers. fall in line. You need, you need to have customers. Yep. If you have zero customers, you have zero business, which equals zero dollars. And, you know, then the market started turning and we started, we were doing all this stuff, like all this diversity and everything. And, and just, we, just kept going and then finally we just picked a couple avenues and we stuck to those and we kept turning and kept turning and kept turning and kept moving forward and you know today we're probably one of the top 10 framing constru construction companies in the valley oh. in 2020. So what do you think would have happened had he answered that phone? Uh, oof, that would be a tough one because I really look up to my father-in-law. He's a great guy, a great businessman. Um, that would have been a tough, I, I'm very glad he didn't because I don't know what I would have said because like, again, failure just wasn't the option, especially when you got small kids, you know, a business that was thriving at a time and you know, you could do it again if you had the opportunity. Um, and I told him, I didn't tell him that story till about five years later. And he said to me, he goes, Ryan, I'm very glad I didn't answer that phone call. What was it? What was it between the phone call? Like what, what happened between the last, the last phone call and the conversation with your, with your wife where you're like, 
We're, I just it's tough. We're, we know we're we're on a, we're running on fumes. We're running on vapor. Like all. Of, by the way, we're all business owners. We've all been yeah. there. It's all tough. You know, we're, we're not. Like John said, there's, there's a lot of false starts, but there's we also talked about earlier today a lot of new beginnings, persistence. Yeah. persistence, but restarting. Yeah. And um, I just spent the day. I just drove around that day, and I just went to all the jobs, and I kind of saw what I could do. And I mean, when you tighten the belt so far, I mean, the only thing you can really do is just stay persistent. And we just came back, we sat down, and we we're just like, we'll make it somehow. Or, you know, if we do lose the house, we'll start again. But, you know, we're going to keep moving forward. And that's what we did. And you had, you had the family support, the wife at home and, and the yeah. kids that supported you. I think that's a big component. And we don't, you know, we talk about it from time to time in our interviews. But, like, honestly, it's being an entrepreneur, being the owner, being the sole guy where people look to it, really, really difficult. And it's even more difficult if you have to come home to a tough environment. So having that you know, support at home. Exactly. And that's the one thing that Corey made a point to earlier is that amount of stress can be very hard on a family oh, yeah. as a unit. And it, it was, you know, and we just stuck it out. And, you know, now that things have changed, I work less. Mm -hmm. We obviously do better, yeah. but market's a condition there too. And you know, since then, um, we've started going into investments and different things outside of the construction framing world. You know, we've been a general contractor and we own an HVAC company that doesn't do anything because we're just so busy doing the other things. And, um, you know, and we, we invested in some multifamily with some of these other guys as investors. Sure. Um, so what's your, what's your five-year horizon for your family and for your businesses like what do you see coming up and we're all in the thick of covid right now and a lot of people with their tails between their legs frankly and are really really worried and scared and you know and and other people's are seeing it as you know a potential great opportunity what do you what do you see on the horizon well i think for arizona i think there's a lot of opportunity with new people moving in from states that are suffering you know much more than we've have or will ever have I, my opinion but i think our business will continue to grow with our relationships that we've built over the over the years with the builders we work for and just potential in other businesses and investments you know i think a lot of states uh you made a point earlier i think a lot of states will be hit harder than arizona you know financially and um won't get into the uh, politics of it? politics <laughs> side of it we're gonna steer clear of that but this, uh, this time <laughs> but i, I think you know i think there's a lot of potential there and i think we have a lot of room for growth still you know um well i i tend to agree i mean i think it's funny it's like i moved here from san antonio and that that area between san antonio and austin i was like i want to get out of this area because i want to go to a growth city like phoenix and then of course I leave and like the area between San Antonio and Austin has been on fire for 15 years. Like just an unbelievable growth corridor. But so has Phoenix been. It's been it's been a great place to raise a family and plant down roots. And as a transient kid and military kid, it's like it's great to like own something here in Phoenix. I'm very bullish on Phoenix. I think I think we're one of the best. Uh, I wouldn't call it a rubber band state, but we bounce back pretty good from getting hit. And uh you know we have a lot of things going for us that other states just don't you know and, and i think if you look at some of these very high dense cities and you know we've got we've got kind of overcrowding and overpopulation problems happening right now and i think that's going to come to our advantage in Phoenix. so hopefully it'll 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 tally up on the framing side with a lot of great business too um what from your experience and it's a question I, that aaron usually asks um well, you have at it, dude. We ask it for every interview, so I'll ask it this time. What's the best, it's one question, what's the best, worst thing that's ever happened to you? Meaning, what's the worst thing that's happened to you that seemed absolutely devastating and, and debilitating and terrible at the time? And it ended up, from a in retrospect, being one of the best things that's ever happened to you in your career. Well, or in your life. You know, uh, that's a really good question. And Aaron actually asked me earlier on the trail. And... um it's basically the story I just told. I mean, 
you know, we kind of got started as a family, living the American dream, kind of building our business very cautiously, wisely, you know, and then we just got decimated to where you, there was nothing you could do. You couldn't work any amount of time or do anything. You, there was no intelligence, a book you could read that could have turned that around, right? And then it does turn around and all the learning experience that you get from it, it you know, that every, you know, you start making great money, you start making big investments through, you know, multifamily or some of these other things or markets and it, that learning experience right there kept me humble. And, you know, we have a great team in our, both of our businesses and, you know, we treat everybody with respect, our customers, the people we build for, and it's just staying like humble and knowing that, you know, that it could turn. It can turn. So be smart, you know, save your money, invest wisely. For a rainy day. For yeah. Uh, yeah. two rainy days have, now. Have a, yeah. have a rainy day yeah. fund. So, or two. <laughs> so the, question, the answer is, is, you know, hitting almost zero and then coming back from it and actually doing what my cousin said was, you know, stick it out, stay strong, stay smart, and you'll come back bigger and better than ever. Yeah. And does we it did. give you, does it give you, and you like in retrospect now you're looking back and of course these are the, these are the dark valleys of our business careers, right? And we're, we're, we've all, we all have similar stories, but does it, doesn't it give you that like an extra level of confidence, even walking into any tough situation now, it's like, I've kind of looked into the valley of the shadow of death. You know, and now I kind of fear no evil. It's like, do you, do you feel like that's steeled you to the extent as a business person and entrepreneur to, you can really kind of go fight, slay any dragon, so to speak? Yeah, I've been in a lot of meetings with big, big builders, the biggest builder in America. No, not that no. one. Oh, <laughs> different. Uh, we're we're uh, going to bleep they, that one out, don't worry. <laughs> so, no, the biggest builder, and, and we sit down with him, I've met him. We've, you know, you go into these meetings and you could be intimidated, but you've been through it all. And, you know, you, and then you invest in different businesses and you read their performers and models and it makes sense to you and you feel empowered to do it and you feel the confidence to do it. And, you know, that don't even have anything to do with straight stick and brick, you know, and me yeah. and my cousin started a, a mining truck company, you know, hmm. we bought one and built from it and. It was something I didn't know about, but you, know, you can invest anywhere. You can be an entrepreneur anywhere. You can, you just have to read through the paperwork, the material, be smart, make smart decisions and okay. sign, sign the right contracts, <laughs> you know? So you do, so you, you, you touch base a little bit, um, on when you started your roofing company, when I'm sorry, your friendly company that, um, you had a lot of naysayers. You had a lot of family members and people around you close to you uh, that were kind of bringing you down, tugging you down, telling you it's going to be hard. Don't do it. Be careful. This isn't going to work out. Take the Things don't work out. How did that affect you personally? Uh, and how did you overcome it? How did you, how did you push through that? Well, that's an easy question to answer. The more that anybody told me I couldn't do something, the harder I pushed forward. And, um, you know, I didn't know a lot about business and 28 years old. I mean, I worked in construction, you know, I worked on a framing crew for Shuck and Sons, you know, running 10 guys that were older than me, you know, but you push through it and you learn from a lot of mistakes, you know, I mean, yeah. you're getting education somewhere, whether yeah. you're paying for it at school or if you're learning from it in the field, I mean, it's there. Education isn't free. Yeah. And you learn from mistakes and you move on and hopefully you learn. <laughs> uh, well, you're in the yeah, I mean, similar industry. Yeah, I mean, you know, absolutely. either that you keep repeating the same, same crap till it just cripples you and you're gone. Yeah. That's it. And then you go find someplace else to go screw up. So really exactly. Down to. Yeah. So what time do you get up in the morning every day? Uh, it depends on what time I'm going to go work out usually, but I used to work out about five in the morning. Now I'm going about eight. So I get up about six. Me too. I try to go to bed around 10 most days. Um, you know, consistency works best. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you have a plan, you have a routine, you have things to get done. I always tell everybody, well, I get up at four 30. And the reason I do that is because I have certain things I have to do. 
So no matter what happens when my day, my work day starts at 8 a.m., I've already accomplished everything I needed to accomplish. So no matter what the rest of the world wants me to do and tries to push me to do, I've already got mine done. So go ahead and push. I can push back. I can fight through that stuff because at the end of the day, I've already accomplished more than everybody else. It's yeah. like the United States Marines and mortgage brokers, basically. basically. It accomplishes more before 8 a.m., before, you know, more than most people accomplish. I believe the big foot that's going to kick everybody's ass every day gets up at 7.30. And those who get up at 8 and run out the door to get to work by <laughs> 8.30 eight, or whatever, eight four, are and they're getting, always late. <laughs> already getting their ass kicked yeah. the second they get up and they'll never get ahead of it. So we've made the determination Bigfoot gets up at 7.30? 7.30. <laughs> okay. I'm good. 7.30. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure it doesn't change. So yeah. for right now. But I, th I think consistency is... <laughs> Floyd's foot. I mean, you guys all know. We're all pretty the old, repetitious. The old, the old saying is early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. But it's really consistently to bed, consistently to rise. Yeah. It's it not every day and every matter. night. It almost doesn't matter what time you go to bed or what time you get up. But, but run your life with structure and and run your life like a business. Like in my opinion. And Well, that's the whole point. I, think, I mean, it's like if I didn't have... If I had the structure that allowed me to get up at seven, I'd be getting up at seven every day. Yeah. But because my structure is a such well, you're accomplished what I need to, I have to be up at four thirty. And your shit happens on the like rates get set on the east coast and that shit happens earlier than you know, we live in Arizona. You gotta get it you gotta I don't exactly. I don't have to get up at four thirty AM every morning to get my to get my shit dialed in. But you know, I gotta get up by six. But you're but you're one of the few that, that recognize that you need structure and it doesn't matter if you're if if, if you wanna be successful at being a W two employee, which a lot of people are, and they're, and they're happy that way. If you don't have structure, you're not going to get at anything. No, so, sure. no. I think that's how the one thing that we're getting getting here is is one. Well, a couple things. You know, like everybody else, you took a beating, you got back up. The people who told you, you couldn't do it, you just stuck it right back in their face. Every single one of us gets that. We get it all the time from our wives. Oh, I don't tell them what they can do. Love you, babe. Now they're gonna do it. I get it from um, Chapman's wife all the time. Well, <laughs> yes, and she does say that to every one of us. So if we try and do something, she's gonna tell us. She just gets mad. It's like fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you not to do it now because I know you're gonna go off and do it. But that motivates us. I mean, I can't tell, tell you how many times people told me maybe you should go back to digging swimming pools. No, don't. I'm just tell everybody don't get. If you want something to get done in your life. You need to decide what that is. Quit jerking off of whatever other things are, are taking your attention away. Focus, go after it, set a plan, get up every damn day at the same damn time, do the same damn things until you're successful getting there, period. Yeah, and if you, if you find yourself falling off track, like, you know, correct, correct it. Yeah, re regroup, yeah. Tack, move forward again. Tack and move, yeah. Recognize it yeah. and get back on track. Yeah, because we're not perfect. We're going to make some mistakes. Well, you're showing yourself a good damn people. That's what we did this weekend. Yeah. Every single person here had a, had a reason to be here. Well, and we're not perfect, but you surround yourself with people who are who are who are, who are, who are fallible and understand their humanity and are open about it. And are, like this, this is literally the whole for for me. This QJO initiative for me is the most important thing. It's the ability to like strip it away and go to a guy who's built something that's important, who's made who's made something that that, that lasts. And uh, we drop our ego at the door. We drop the bullshit. And we're totally. like, all right, how'd we get there? Totally. Like, and when and things go sideways, there? when things go, because they will go sideways at some point. Like I'm 43 and I guarantee you, we're going to hit a couple more walls in our businesses. I would love, and, I, and that's why I surround myself with these guys. It's like the opportunity to be able to reach out and be like, dude, what should I do here? What should I do here? What could I do here? What could I be doing differently? Where can I learn? Where can I grow? Where can I bob and weave? Like, like that's that's why this sometimes stuff, it just helps it, have somebody who understands to yeah. just download to. Yeah. Yeah. We may not even have any answers. Just download. So sometimes for the guy for the guys out there that that sometimes. haven't have yet to build something great, like and are are struggling to to find the structure in their lives to create the success that that they're after, creating the picture is first creating the structure in my mind is second creating the network and the support system is is next and if you don't have that like i know you had naysayers but you also had people yeah that probably had your back so like you know like john and i are very good friends mm -hmm. and we have some other guys who's john again I john, yeah. john Gaston, no, I'm just like, <laughs> give him shit he's the, he's the sexiest <laughs> person <laughs> <we've had laughs> so 
but we have another we have other friends and i have other groups and like you know we kind of keep each other in check you know yeah. it's you know when you start yeah. slipping you know you got a guy that you really trust comes in and says hey it's the other hey, foot <laughs> like what's going on over there you know like like reel it back in reel a little bit yeah. yeah and that's that's important to have this you don't group, need to take the g5 that... when you can take the eclipse 500 I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now you're just picking straws. Well, like there. 300 episodes away from that. <laughs> but now, I, we all really appreciate you guys having us here. And this was a great, We're glad great you're weekend and, glad a, you're and a good kind of relief, you know, like a breather, you know? Yeah. I have to get out sure. and trawl over some rocks. And... Well, and it's been a tough 60, 90 90 days for a lot of people, but, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and I think the last few episodes have been very cathartic for me, let's put it that way. <laughs> Look forward to them. Yeah, it's a lot getting out here and getting it done. And you forget crap. You got to run down to the store and wherever else. But it's, yeah. I look forward to them. I'm looking forward to the day where it's bigger, crazier, more stuff going on. Yeah, well, it's because we all learn from it. I mean, yeah. um, if there, we, you know, picky Timmy Brown. We had him on a couple, couple uh, shows ago, and and he had, he said something that stuck with me. A couple things, a lot of things actually. Uh, but I saw some of that in John today when we were riding around. Um, and uh, it was the uh, is the invite yourself, right? Don't be afraid to invite yourself. And, and one yeah. of his big turning points was uh, inviting himself to uh, a state, and it turned into be a good thing. So, so we we learn from everybody. You know, we had good conversations today, and yeah, and a lot of a lot of what you said and where you got you came from, I could relate. Um, and so it's just it's kind of nice to sit around and talk to people that have the same common interests, but also went through the same kind of things, kind of reassure you that you're not alone uh, and you can lean on people for help. Well, see, a lot of th a lot of times, you know, when you're at a top level or, you know, have a high revenue, you know, they only see that nobody ever really sees the digging deep parts and the crawling your way back up parts and the writing the, the writing the checks part the writing the check parts like the, the the 15 years before that where all you did was write checks and dealing with all exactly. the like the, nothing came into the account all went out right. of the damn account right. so you know the success stories might be great but it's the other side that you know it's the other 90 percent that brought you to the last 10 percent well know? and then the constant it's, it's one thing to get there it's another thing to keep it so That's much right. harder to I've keep heard it. that before from someone. So yeah. much harder to keep it. All right, sir. Awesome, well, man. Let's go get some rest. Got another day ahead of us tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks appreciate for coming, it. brother. Thank you. We appreciate, appreciate it. You all. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Yeah.